Alrighty. As we can see, our the next topic that we're going to talk about is all about combining functions. Now, when we first introduced introduced the idea of a function, it was sort of a, a machine that spat out stuff. Right? Since we're dealing with math stuff, it, it uh, the thing that they spat out were numbers. So it sort of makes sense that whatever we can do with numbers arithmetically, we should be able to do with functions because they're nothing more than numbers in disguise. So the arithmetic operations, add, subtract, multiply, divide, not surprisingly, are valid for functions. But functions aren't actually numbers, they are machines, and with all machines, there are certain things you can put in them and certain things you cannot. In other words, domains. So when it comes to adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing functions, we have to be weary. We have to be cautious. What is the domain going to be? Well, the statement is going to be very, very obvious. Um, you know, obvious statement is obvious. But I hope everyone understands right, that in order for, and I'm just going to pick a random arithmetic operation, say addition. In order for the addition of two functions added together, which by definition is just one function plus the other function, in order for function addition to be defined, I mean, look at the definition. What does function uh, addition equal? E equals one function plus the other function. So in order for the whole thing to be defined, their individual pieces must be defined. f of x and g of x individually must be defined. Right? And that's sort of like a no-duh statement. It, uh, it, it's sort of like uh, making a recipe. Uh, if, if baking a cake requires two cups of flour and one cup of water, well, I can't bake a, uh, whatever I said, cake, if I don't have two cups of flour and one cup of water, right? I mean, you need all the pieces to work in order for the whole combination to work. What's the implication for us then? Therefore, right, in order to guarantee that our domain will work for all of the addition, the overall domain of the addition, f plus g of x, is the domain of f, whatever he will be. And I'm going to take the intersection, so that's the upside down union, of the domain of g. Right? So basically, you take the two separate domains and overlap them. And that you know, sort of makes sense, duh. If, if this thing is only defined where both of them are defined, then the domain must be the overlap or the intersection. Now, I, I hope this idea is pretty straightforward. I mean, we didn't, that didn't require lots of high-level calculus thinking. It's a pretty obvious statement. Um, we could run through the same statement for subtraction, multiplication, division. So I only did it for addition, but the idea is this is true for all of the other arithmetic operations. Uh, I, if this is true for subtracting functions, this is true for multiplying functions. And this is true for dividing functions. Right. Notice I little put a put a little asterisk. I put a little footnote on f over g of x because when it comes to division, I mean, yeah, this logic still holds, but division has an extra layer. Remember when we found domains of regular functions? I think that was two one or two two. Um, Whenever you have a division problem, you have to make sure that the denominator does not equal zero. So in the case of division, all of this logic is true, except um, you have to make sure that the denominator does not equal zero. Aside from this extra thinking that you have to do about, geez, what is our final domain? Uh, if I ask you to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions, I, that's what I literally want you to do. Just add, just subtract, just multiply, just divide. You don't, you don't have to do anything crazy solving. There's nothing to solve. You literally just put the pieces together. So um, I'm not a trick question. I'm, tr you know, I'm very, being very upfront here. This example that we're about to do will be stupidly easy. Okay. So um, say, for example, 
let f of x equals 1 over x minus 2 and g of x equals the square root of x find letter A the addition letter B the subtraction letter C the multiplication letter D the division right. and their domains right. so I, I I'm asking you to do two things well I guess eight things here uh, do the thing that I asked you to do plus find their domains Oh, man, Mr. Vo, that's a lot of work. Did you assign us a lot of practice problems or a lot of uh, homework questions? Yes. Um, but here's the idea. I'm going to scroll up, but I'll scroll back down. This singular idea is true for adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. So if I find the domain once, you basically have found the domain for all four questions. So I'm going to sort of answer this example out of order. I'm going to actually find the domain first. So again, to find the domain of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, you find the domain separately. So I'm going to find the domain of f, of f separately. Here's our f function. So let's think back to 2.1 or 2.2. To find the domain of uh, an equation, you're thinking of two bullet points. Do I have an even root? Do I have a denominator? Very obvious here, we have a denominator. And the one thing in math, when it comes to denominators, it cannot equal zero. So that's exactly what we write down. The denominator cannot equal zero. And then it gives you an inequality to solve. X equal, uh, does not equal two. So that is the domain of F. So what is the domain of the G function? And again, the G function is red X. Hey, we have a radical here. And the idea in math is you can't take an even root of a negative number. In other words, the radicand, the stuff inside the radical, I want to be not negative. In math, to be not negative is to be greater than or equal to zero. Hey, x is already solved for. I'm done. So what is my overall domain? Right. My overall domain would be the intersection of these two. Basically, what it means is you're just going to put both on the same number line and see where they overlap. So I hope everyone can agree that this right here is x is greater than or equal to zero, right? Shading, starting at zero, shading to the right. So I got this domain. Now I have to incorporate the information from this domain. So do you see how this says it cannot equal two? So that's as if at x equals two here, I have an open circle. So that right there would be the overall domain. Two separate pieces. Starting at zero, comma, going all the way to two, union, starting at two, and then going all the way to infinity. Easy peasy? That will be the domain for A, B, C, and D, but with a little footnote on D. Um, but so that's that's the idea. If I ask you to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and find the domains, it's not eight separate problems. Just find one domain, and it'll be the same for all of them. So let's actually do the addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, division. So letter A, Ooh, what happened there? Uh, F plus G, well, F plus G of X, by definition, is just adding them separately. Uh, the F function was one over X minus two, plus the G function was radical X. Nothing too crazy, I just substituted. Uh, do we have any like terms? No, guess what, just leave it like that. Don't You don't have to do extra work, boom. There's the addition function. Well, because this is inside of a radical, and this is just a rational expression, they're, they're two different types. We can't mix them. I mean, you're more than welcome to attempt to put them together, but I'll accept that. And as we've already said, as we have already found out, the domain is 0, 2, union to infinity, right? So I guess I should box both of these guys. There's letter A, easy peasy. Letter B, what is the subtraction? By definition, it's just those two functions subtracted from each other. Well, the F function was one over X minus two minus the G function was radical X. Are they like terms? No, so just leave it, you're done. You subtracted, easy peasy. And as we've already said, 
the domain is zero to union to infinity. Letter C, what is the product? What is the multiplication? By definition, you just multiply them uh, separately. So f of x times g of x. f was 1 over x minus 2. g of x is radical x. Now, this is multiplication involving a fraction. Regular numbers to multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. So that is simply uh, radical x over x minus 2. Easy peasy, you're done. And then, of course, the domain is the same as always. Union to, to infinity. So I hope everyone can see that adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing fractions, it's just literally add them, subtract them, multiply them. Um, you have a little bit of thinking to do with when it comes to the domain, but just find the domain separately and take the intersection. Last but not least, letter D, the one with the footnote, division. So in terms of actually finding the function, it's the same as always. Division by definition is just taking the first fraction divided by the second fraction. So f is 1 over x minus 2 over the g function's radical x. So this is a compound fraction. Simplify a compound fraction however you want. Or, you know, just think back to elementary school. What your elementary school teacher taught you. Dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So, dividing by radical x is the same thing as multiplying by, I'm going to take the radical x and flip them. 1 over rad x. And then now when you multiply fractions, multiply straight across. Uh, 1 over rad x over x minus 2. Right. Now we do have the domain, and yes, the domain will be a part of the original domain that we found out. So this should be at least involved with the domain of the division. However, when it comes to division, we have an extra footnote. I do not want the denominator to equal zero. The denominator in this case is g of x. So uh, we do not want g of x to equal zero. In other words, we want g of x not to equal zero. So you just have to solve that inequality really quickly. What was g of x? That was red x does not equal zero, so x cannot equal zero. So all you have to do is take our domain, so don't write this down because I'm gonna do some erasing. You have to take the domain that we found, zero to two, union, two to infinity, and then you just have to incorporate this new information. Does everyone agree that if I were to incorporate this new information, all that would happen is this square bracket on zero turns to parentheses? because you're literally taking away the zero answer. So that would be the domain. So this is what I would write down, right? So that's the only difference division does. You do the same adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. They have all the same domains uh, with the exception of division. When you do the division part, just exclude the denominator being zero. Okie dokie? Mm -hmm. Right. <coughs> So this is the similarities between functions and real numbers. But what functions can do that real numbers cannot is this next way we can combine functions. Because functions are input-output machines, right? Numbers are just numbers. You can't put inside of something inside of a two. That doesn't make any sense. But it does make sense to put stuff inside of a function. The only thing that's uh, the idea is that who said we were restricted to numbers? You can substitute anything you want inside of a function, including another function. We call those uh, compositions. So the idea of a composition is putting one function inside another. Mathematically, it's very simple. All it is is substitution. If you know how to substitute, if you know how to plug stuff in, you know how to do composition. Uh, the hard part is, and it's not hard at all, it's the thinking part. How do I figure out the domain? Right. So what is the domain of a function composition? It will be 
the domain of your inside function. And if you're going, hey, Mr. Well, what do you mean by inside function? When do we talk about insides and outsides? I'll explain it later. Intersect the domain of uh, your resultant function. Right. That is to say, the domain of your answer. So if you're still going resultant function, inside function, what the heck are you talking about? Maybe if we take a look at the notation, that will make sense. So uh, function composition does have its own fancy notation. It uses a little circle O. Uh, so for example, let's say we did F composed of G, sometimes pronounced fog. All that is is saying, hey, take the F function, and instead of a regular X, you're going to stuff him full of the G function, right? So function composition is read from right to left. That's sort of the weird thing about math. It's not left to right, it's right to left. Uh, so whatever's on the right side, you put it inside the left. So if I switch the order, G of F, sometimes pronounced as Goff, this says the G is the outside function, the F is the inside function. So that's what I mean by inside and outside. Uh, so what is the domain of a composition? It's the domain of the inside function with the domain of the resultant function. I think this would make a little bit of, uh, more sense with a concrete example. So example here. If, uh, let's say f of x is our good friend, the square root of x g of x is a new friend, square root of 2 minus x. Find the following and their domains. Right. So a would be fog, b would be goff, c would be foff, and d would be gog. Now, the earlier class only needed uh, examples A and B. We'll see uh, how many examples we need. I can do them all if you want, but uh, I'll check in. Now, unlike the uh, arithmetic, the adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, I can't just find the domain up front and then just say, oh, there's going to be the same for throughout. Because for function compositions, the domains may not be the same. They could but they may not, so you actually have to do it individually. So let's go ahead and do this one at a time. So letter A, fog of x. That just says take the f function and plug in a g function. So what that says is, and I'm going to erase the highlight so you, feel, you don't need to highlight it, uh, the whole g function, wherever I see an x in the f function, he's going to change into the g function. So I'm going to substitute radical 2 minus x into this x here. So that's all you have to do. So that gives us the square root of, instead of writing x, I'm going to write the square root of 2 minus x. So all I did was put one function inside of another function. Now let's see if we remember uh, unit 1. This I think this was like 1.4, 1.3. Properties of radicals. When you stack radicals, their index multiply, just like exponents. So this is a 2, this is a 2, it becomes a fourth root. Right. That's it. That's our uh, function. So now i got to find the domain. So it's, again, the, do the idea is domain of compositions, domain of the inside with the domain of the answer. So what was my inside function? We can see that the inside function was g, right? So I need the domain of g. And g was square root of 2 minus x. So what's the idea of a, taking a, a domain of a radical? The stuff inside the radical ha cannot be negative. To be non-negative would be to be greater than or equal to 0. And then you just go ahead and solve it. So that is uh, 2 is greater than or equal to x. Not too bad. I just added x to both sides. And then you do the domain of the answer. 
So what was the answer function that we got? It was the fourth root of 2 minus x. Right. So again, it's an even root. So the idea is the stuff inside the radical, 2 minus x, cannot be negative greater than or equal to 0. And then you get is greater than or equal to x. So in this instance, they happen to be the same. Uh, so that's easy. There's our domain. Our domain is x is less than or equal to 2, which looks something like negative infinity comma 2. Uh, they're not always going to be the same here, but uh, in this case, we lucked out. Hint, hint, the next example will not be the same. But you guys understand what I mean by domain of the inside function and the domain of the answer? Yeah, so that's how you find domains of a composition. Do the inside, do the whole answer. Uh, let's look at something that's less boring, uh, letter B. This one has some interesting features to it. So letter B says Goff. So that's G with an F plugged on the inside. So the G was square root of 2 minus X. So it's the square root of 2 minus X. But instead of writing X, I'm going to write the F function, which happens to be another square root. In this case, I cannot use properties of radicals because I have a binomial here. That 2 minus really screws it up. So here's the nice thing. I can't simplify him. So there's our answer. Yeah. Yep. Easy peasy. So we got to find the domain. Well, it's the domain of the inside. In this example, what was my inside function? What did I plug in? Rad x. I plugged in the f, which is the radical x. So what is his domain? I don't want the inside stuff to be negative. So x is greater than or equal to 0. Not too bad. Then you do the domain of the answer. So the domain of the answer, well, the answer was radical 2 minus radical x. So I, I, I hope everyone can see when you have these multi-radicals, this is the main radical part. So the idea is that the stuff inside of that main radical cannot be negative. So the stuff inside the main radical is 2 minus radical x has to be greater than or equal to 0. And then you go ahead and solve him. Add the radical x over. Because 2 is positive and radical x is positive, it is safe to square both sides. You get 4 is greater than or equal to x. Then I would have to use a sign diagram. But in this case, I can solve it straight up because they're both positive. Yeah. So how do I find the intersection? So again, the intersection is the overlap. Now, I usually do this in my head, but since this is notes and you can't see what I'm thinking, I'll draw it out. So you want to draw out these two guys here. So let's visualize it. All right. I'll box this as my answer. So we have x is greater than or equal to 0. Here's 0, bolded, shaded to the right. Not too bad. Next is 4 is greater than or equal to x. 4 is right here bolded, and shade to the left, right? Are we all okay with that? All right. An intersection is sort of mentally, you put the two number lines on top of each other and see where they overlap. In this particular example, I hope it's obvious. Can everyone see that they overlap between the yellow lines? That is your domain. So your domain is 0, 4. That is the domain of that composition. Any questions with these two examples? Gog and Foff, same concept, except you're just plugging a function into itself. Raise your hand if you need to see those examples worked out. Okay, let's just do uh, Foff. I think that's the next one. Yeah, Foff. And after that, let's see if we need to do Gog. So C, Foff of X, which is just F of F of X. So you start with the F function, square root of X. But instead of writing X, I'm going to write the F function again, which happens to be square root of X. 
When you stack square roots or when you stack radicals, you multiply the indices. So that's the fourth root of x. Domain of inside. The inside function was f, which was rad x. So the domain is greater than or equal to 0. Domain of answer. Fourth root of x. What is the domain of fourth root of x? x is greater than or equal to 0. So what's my overall domain? 0 to infinity. Right. Did that fairly quickly, but I, th I hope it's simple and easy enough for everyone. Right. And we can imagine GOG is the same way, except use the G function. Right. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to skip the, uh, the D example. I think you guys get the idea. Uh, one other thing with compositions, though, that is unique from arithmetic operations. Arithmetic operations, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, they are what are called binary operators. You can only add, subtract, multi multiply, and divide two things at a time. I cannot subtract three things at once. Technically speaking, I cannot add three things at once. Compositions do not have that restriction. You can compose three things together, four things together, five, six, seven, nine bajillion things together. Um, you just chain them up. Uh, so let's just do a quick example of a uh, function composition that's more than two pieces long. For example, if uh, f of x equals x over x plus 1, g is x to the 10th power, h is x plus 3, find f of g of h of x. Fogo, find Fogo. If function note, uh, excuse me, if composition notation is too confusing to you, well, my suggestion is to rewrite it as function notation. Because function notation we do read from left to right. So this says f is on the outside of what comes next is the g function of. And what comes next is the h function. Okay. Now, when I do this personally, I usually just do it all at once in my head. Again, you can't see what I'm thinking of in my head, so I'll go ahead and write it out in parts. Do I expect you to do it this way when you do it yourself? No, I'm only doing it for the notes so you can see it. The first thing I would do is do the inside out. They're just like regular parentheses. So the first thing I would do is g of h of x. Right. Oh, bad notation here of x. There you go. Yeah, perfect. So g of h of x. Wherever I see an x in the g function, plug in the h function. So that is x plus 3 to the 10th power, right? Then all you got to do is write it out 10 times, foil it out, and get an answer. Or you can just leave it like that. Your choice. I'm not going to make you expand it. Then what I do is you take this answer here and you put it into the f function. So f of g of h of x is wherever I see an x in the f function, I plug the previous result in. So take the f function, and wherever you see an x, you plug in a parentheses x plus 3 to the 10th power. So that's going to be x plus 3 to the 10th power over x plus 3 to the 10th power plus 1. Again, that's a pretty big exponent. I'm not going to make you expand it. You can leave it as is. You can imagine if I attached another function, you just take this answer and plug into the other function. If I attach another function, take that answer and plug in. You can keep going on and on and on. I can make you do four, five, six, whatever. It's the same idea. Take the answer of one piece, plug into the other. Questions? Comments? Concerns? That's basically the algebra of functions. You can add, subtract, multiply, and divide them, or you can shove one into the other. And that is 2.1.